a federal grand jury indictment for former President Trump could be eminent. That is according to a new report from The Independent. Trump faces uh, potential charges for his handling of classified documents at his Mar-a-Lago estate in Florida. Here's what we know. There are reports that Trump has been sent a letter from federal prosecutors which confirms he is a target of the investigation. Special Counsel Jack Smith, who of course was appointed by Attorney General Merrick Garland, is leading the classified documents probe and also a separate probe focused on Trump's actions leading up to and on January the 6th. Yesterday, NBC News reported that former White House Chief Strategist Steve Bannon had been subpoenaed by Smith last month in the Capitol breach investigation. And former Trump aide and MAGA Inc. Super PAC founder Taylor Butowich announced yesterday on Twitter that he testified before a Florida federal grand jury, which is hearing evidence in the Mar-a-Lago docs probe. He called it a bogus and deeply troubling effort to use the power of government to, quote unquote, get Trump. Let's talk about what's going on here and welcome back our panel. Joining us, commentary editor at The Washington Times, Kelly Sadler, also back with us, longtime advisor to former President Trump, Bruce Lavelle. Great to have you both here. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having us. Well, go ahead, sorry. No, go ahead. There's a lot to get to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just at a certain point, you know, you, you, there's some special grand jury all over the place, grand jury in Georgia, grand jury in you know, different grand juries, of course. That's a state grand jury, a federal grand jury in Florida now. I mean, Bruce, this is never going to stop. It's never going to stop. Yeah, you know, it's funny because it's like you got to get a U-Haul to load up all the, the junk. That's what I call it. You know, I just wrote an a, 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 a op-ed. It's on, it's on my Twitter. It talks about the weaponization of these particular uh, places like New York here in Atlanta, you know, how that's really hurting us. And, and, and this is something really unfortunate for the country and for the world because the U.S., I hope, still is looked at as the world's leader, is that uh, the fact that the weaponization is has gotten so entrenched. I mean, you know, you said they sent a, a letter saying you're a target. I mean, he's been a target as soon as he came down the escalator. Newsflash! I could have told you that. So it's 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 unfortunate though. But I'm I'm very optimistic. And Newsmax viewers, I know the president very well. He's very confident. He's very poised. He knows this is part what was going to happen. You know, in terms of fighting and you know for us. And he says, look, so they're not coming after him. They're coming after you, us. So that's essentially when you see this, that's us, we the right. people. So I just want to remind all the viewers, like, don't don't panic. Everything's good. God's going to take care of this. God is always in control. And they're not going after, apparently, anyone who's Democratic. No. Uh, Democrat, Alina Haba, speaking to Newsmax just yesterday. Here is her reaction to what is the so-called looming indictment. We have Hillary Clinton, you have Obama, you have Biden, you have uh, Bush, tons of people that have had uh, declassification, clarification issues with NARA, which mm -hmm. effectively is all it should or would have been mm -hmm. if he was not Donald Trump. Um, so if they do come out with an indictment, I can tell you that it is complete mishandling and weaponization of the DOJ because we've seen this exact problem with other presidents and they're not treated the right. same. Kelly, if they do yeah. indict uh, the president, be it on obstruction or some some charge here, mm -hmm. what do you think it does to the base? We saw what Bragg's indictment did in the days after. Well, I think it absolutely motivates the base. It will energize the base because this is this is a case where you had the president of the United States who has declassification powers. Um, and the president claims that he de declassified everything when he left office and he brought these documents down to Mar-a-Lago, unlike Joe Biden, where you had classified documents found in his garage, found at the pen, you know, in his think tank here in Washington, D.C. Um, and we haven't heard anything about that case. There's a special uh, process prosecutor that's on that case, a special counsel that's on that case. Joe Biden was vice president. He did not have declassification powers. No. So if you're going to charge the president of the United States, the former president of the United States um, for this classification issue and obstruction or whatever the process issue is, then you're going to have to charge Joe Biden. But this is where we see the dual systems of justice, right? You have Joe Biden, where you have the FBI basically trying to cover up a bribery scheme, a $5 million bribery scheme with foreign governments not producing that evidence to the House Oversight Committee. You have his son, Hunter, who's getting millions of dollars from foreign countries across the world um, and, and funneling them into uh, other Biden family members. And there seems to be no no, no concern None. at the DOJ about None. prosecuting any of this, but let's go get Donald Trump on, well, on some documents he took back home to Mar-a-Lago. Mar and I would go as far to say, if you listen to some of these FBI whistleblowers, there's actually a concerted effort inside the DOJ to slow roll these I investigations. 
So they do care about him a little bit, but they just want to make sure they don't go forward anywhere. Mm -hmm. All right, we also exactly. wanted to ask you, Donald Trump is, is putting out an ad basically on, online to push back against Jack Smith. Here's a part of it he posted on Truth Social. <laughs> so like a pack of rabid wolves, they attack. So let's impeach him. Let's get tainted radical left prosecutors to charge him. Let's conspire with Hillary and the FBI with fake stories about him. All to distract from Biden's incompetence, weakness, and money-grabbing corruption. Now, uh, the ad says it, guys, but a lot of people are thinking it. And what we've seen in the past is as the legal pressure mounts on Donald Trump, his poll numbers seem to rise for some reason, Bruce. Yeah, and they're going to continue to rise and see. You know, listen, this, this, this whole situation right now is going to boil down 2024 to, quote, the economy. Independents, black folk, white folk, everybody's going to be looking at the checkbook, uh, Bianca and John. So they're going to like, gosh, were we better off in four years when President Trump was here, the business guy? Or are we better now? No. So once again, it's kind of like it, it's kind of like you're, you're throwing something up against the wall. And sooner or later, you know, people are starting to get numb. And I'm, I have a pulse in the community. I'm out here. I have a business. I have a lot of tentacles in all sides of the aisles here in the south across the country. And they're kind of like, enough's enough. And I'm going to tell you, here's going to be the sleeper going in 20, I would say sleeper, that watch watch the black vote, watch the minority vote. You, you watch what happens as we as we go on into 2024. And so that's that's the optimism here. It's actually, to Kelly's point, it's actually going to be more favorable. The polls are going to get higher and higher and higher. So you know what? Keep up with the silliness, because all you're doing is giving us favor. Yeah, I, I think so, too. And there's a lot of Latinos, too, have already, uh, you know, exited the Democratic Party, as you know. So let's spend a moment real quickly while we have you both. Mike Pence uh, talking in Iowa yesterday, saying Trump is not qualified to become president again. He says he would support him if he does take the GOP nomination. Uh, but your reaction to that and his entry into the race first to you, Kelly, we have about just about a minute left, though. It, there was some very strong words there, especially about January 6th as well against his former boss. Well, I don't know why uh, Mike Pence is entering in the race. He doesn't have a lane. Uh, the Never Trumpers hate him for standing by Trump's side for four years. The MAGA base hates him for, for what he did on January 6th. So I'm not sure who's going to vote for Mike Pence, but good luck to him. And, uh, you know, he has his faith and he thinks that God uh, wants him to become president. Maybe he's running because he, you know, he looks like he's genuinely having fun at the roast and ride event. Uh, as they Bruce, pointed out, he's the only guy. Bruce, real quick, we got about 20 seconds John, if you want to jump in. The only reason he's running, and I say this like Christy and the rest of them, those special interests, those pay to play consultants are all in their ear. You should run because you're the safe <laughs> choice. To do that, that, that. Well, a lot of people are going to spend a lot of money backing candidates that are not going to be the nominee, obviously, with 12 people in the race here. There's going to be some hurt feelings, as always, and then everyone's going to have to come together at the very end and coalesce around one candidate. We'll see what happens. Bruce and Kelly, thank you both for being here. Great conversation. Thank you. As always, thanks, guys.